Mfunga Mwaka, a mine in the east of Congo. These men work so that we can make telephone calls. They're mining coltan, which is indispensable for the production of mobile phones. The Democratic Republic of Congo is the world's second largest supplier of this rare mineral. Funga Mwaka is a model mine. There is no child labor. State controls are carried out. Taxes are paid. Those in charge of the mine operate legally. And above all, there are no militia groups who finance themselves by smuggling resources. The long civil war is the biggest problem in East Congo, funded by the resource wealth in the ground. 90% of the mines are managed by small-scale miners in remote border areas, an El Dorado for rebel groups who demand a share of the yield and sell it on the global market via neighboring countries like Rwanda. Audrey Bialura has been working in Fungamwaka since November 2014. He used to be a farmer until rebels stole his cattle several years ago. He now has to work as a mine laborer, and he lives in the mining town of Numbi in a simple wooden shack without a mattress. During the boom days, miners could still earn good money here. But since the dream of new gold has come to an end, most of them just run up debts. I've earned nothing so far. Instead of that, I've had to borrow money from the boss to pay for my mining license and rent and food. Life is expensive in Numbi, and the yield from the mine is much too low. A legal mine is managed by a cooperative. Entrepreneurs lease parts of it and hire workers like Audrey to mine them. The profits are split. 50% goes to the entrepreneurs. The ore is separated from the sand with a shovel, just like in the old gold digging days. The price of tin has dropped to 5 euros a kilo in the provincial capital. At least Coltan still fetches 20 euros. SESCAM, the national authority overseeing the mining industry, registers the minerals that leave Fungamwaka and seals the plastic bags. But local dealers immediately open the bags again. First, to remove any dirt and iron, and then to separate the valuable coltan from the cassiterite with the help of a simple magnet. This is where the control system breaks down and a grey area begins. Large amounts of minerals are transported from illegal mines to official mining zones at night. How can this be prevented? Bukavu, provincial capital of South Kivu. In the yard of the Geological Museum, the Federal Institute for Geosciences and Natural Resources from Hanover has established a laboratory which can determine the origin of ores. Every sediment has specific characteristics that indicate where the material is from, even when it has been transported across borders, legally or by smugglers. The geological fingerprint is a way to identify dirty minerals. But as an exporter in Bukavu explains, control measures tend to decrease the profitability of a mine like Fungamwaka. The prices on the world market stay the same. All the costs, taxes, fees, have to be carried by the mine workers. That is why Miserior and other European development organizations are demanding action from the European Union. They want to see ambitious legislation that will break the links between natural resources and conflict. Businesses that operate on the European market and sell products containing conflict minerals should be held accountable for their supply chain. They should ensure that human rights standards are respected throughout, from the raw materials to the finished product. And they should cover the cost of this. In Fungamwaka, it's only the miners who pay for the controls. They earn less. I couldn't send a single franc to my family in the last few months. I also can't go home. I would be arrested immediately because of my debts.